Good morning, KU. I'm your host, Rebecca Schlichting, and this is Avalon. Hello. Boy, is it raining outside. Jeez. Yes, it's it is. It's pouring rain. <laughs> Yes. Where'd you park? How'd I you had to park there? in the parking garage. I did the same thing. And that's the oh worst because it costs so much per hour. Do you know how much it costs an hour? I think it's a dollar fifty per hour. It's I don't have a dollar fifty to spend on that. Are you kidding? Yeah, but at least we're not walking in the rain yeah, or riding true. the bus, or at least we're not from California and don't have our <laughs> rain jackets yet. <laughs> right. I know. I need to pull that out. Jeez, I wasn't expecting it to rain this hard this soon. Yeah, me neither. I I don't know. Uh, Oh my gosh. Tomorrow it's supposed to be in the 90s though, so we oh should have wow. some more sunshine. Kansas weather, let me tell you. Yeah, definitely. Hot one day, freezing the next. I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, in the midst of all this rain, don't forget to hang on to your cell phone. It might yes, slip around. Yes, hang on to your cell phone, <laughs> students, because there's a lot of identity theft happening recently. Yeah, according to the Kansan, only 50% of students lock, have a lock on their cell phone. Yeah, and I am a part of that 50%. Same I do here. not have a lock on my phone. Don't either. We can change that, I think. That's yeah. a good idea, especially <laughs> the nights when you're out and about or when it's raining like this and it can yeah. just fall out of your hand. And I've heard like a lot of students, their phones are connected to their credit cards, maybe buying things on Amazon. Who mm -hmm. knows? I mean, yeah, you could, you there's could, tons of ways it can happen. So many things. And then a huge reason why this is is because college students are a huge target because we have smartphones mm -hmm. and it makes it easier to steal somebody's identity right that. i know everyone has a smartphone mm -hmm. these days and then social media yeah <laughs> speaking of smartphones if you have an ios device you can now print from anywhere on campus which is pretty awesome so iphones ipads ipods <laughs> ipods just connect to wi-fi and just go to your printing option and anywhere you can print and they'll just hold on to your device at anschutz or watson mm -hmm. That might be handy if you're walking across campus and you think, oh, I forgot to print my Homework. report out for <laughs> yeah. class today. Oh, Seriously. that is so hel helpful. Unless you are like me and have an Android. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry, Android users. You can't do it. Yep. But, you know, another reason to get an iPhone? No. I'm know. biased. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, another perk of KU is the take your professor to lunch. Oh, right. Yeah. And you can do that by Googling take your professor to lunch at KU. <laughs> you can pretty and much Google anything and find yeah, it. Pretty much. And they give you $15 for the market. And mm. so you take your professor. I did it a couple of years ago, and me and my professor that I took out to lunch still get together. What professor so. was it? Um, she was my English professor for World Indigenous Literature. Oh, wow. Yeah, and she was an amazing person. It, it's nice to make those connections. Right. I'll have to try that. Mm -hmm. Good for references, definitely. Yeah, and good to keep those connections intact and get to know your professors. That's one thing that's great about KU, too. Yeah, the hands onness, the printing from far away. <laughs> <laughs> Just a great school altogether. Definitely. <laughs> awesome. And another thing we have going on in Lawrence is they are introducing a tattoo removal place. Oh, right, because you could not get your tattoos removed before. I'm sorry. Not You're in Lawrence. stuck with it. Of course, it's costs probably a couple thousand, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm not really you sure. You know, a few thousand here and there. Yeah, but it's definitely worth it if you have an X tattooed on you. Right. <laughs> I don't think I would ever do that. I right. honestly, I just, I couldn't get myself to do that. Yeah. Just tattoo someone's name on you, honestly. Or just some That's dedication, you don't let want. me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, I think that's all we have yeah, today. Yeah, I think that's all we have today. All right, so we'll be right back with Jose Luis and his guest. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you.
morning, KU. My name is Jose Luis Militich, and today with me I have a guest. Uh, my guest's name is Kristen Renfro Hardy. Uh, good morning, Kristen. Good morning. How are you today? Not bad at all. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, the non-traditional students, mm -hmm. and uh, like, me. <laughs> like us, yes. yes. And so, if you want to maybe give me a little bit about your, uh, tell me a little bit about your background and what it's like to be a non-traditional student here at KU. I became a non-traditional student at KU two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. um, shortly after a car ran me over while I was walking down Lawrence Avenue. Wow. Um, I worked about 12 years as a chef prior to that. Um, my legs got run over by the car, so I didn't really want to pull the 12, 14 hour a day shifts on my feet anymore. Um, so I applied to KU and here I am trying to you know, maybe segue into something a little more sedentary, like not quite as physically challenging as being a chef. And what are you studying at KU? Sorry to hear about your mm. accident, by the way. I am majoring in applied behavioral science with a minor in anthropology. And uh, how would you describe the experience of uh, being a, a non-traditional student at KU? What does it feel like to be on campus with younger <clears throat> students? And You're always kind of on the periphery uh, of things. I mean, you know, colleges are designed for young people fresh out of high school. Like, you know, this really isn't our environment so much as it is theirs. Um, <clears throat> my experience has, um, it, it's been positive, but I, I think it's because I've been proactive in making it positive. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just very communicative with my TAs, professors, whoever's leading the class that I'm in. And, and you know, I, I communicate to them that I have not been in a college environment for more than a decade. Um, I have responsibilities at home that are often distracting. If, if there's anything that I think is interfering with coursework, I, I, I let them know before that interference pops up. And I was going to ask about that. How, how, do you, how is it managing school life and your personal life? And I know that you have a, a young son, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I do. Um, <coughs> I, I'm fortunate in that family chips in and helps a lot, so that makes it a little bit more manageable. Um, <coughs> You'd learn to improvise a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just kind of fly by the seat of our pants. Like you, I try not to get too attached to things like sleep or food. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> as long as I'm willing to give those up, then yeah, it, it's, not, it's not too impossible. Um, do you find that it's awkward sometimes to be in class, uh, depending on what class you're in, with a bunch of undergrads that might be 19, 20, um, and there's a Personally, it hasn't been awkward for me at all. No. No. It's been no. a little awkward for me. Okay. Has it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm very open about how long it's been since I've, you know, been to school, and very. I, I talk a lot about you know what brought me to school or my the age difference between us and you know, the younger friends that I've made at KU. It's always kind of a, a joke. Like it's just. I something get, that we're very open about. Sometimes students will ask if I want to go out and meet them out for a beer or something, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. We're, there's kind of a big age yeah, gap here. Yeah, what are we really going to talk about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I understand. So what do you plan to do after school? Um, I want to use the strategies of behavior modification that I'm learning um, through the Applied Behavioral Science Department to help people who are recovering from traumatic accidents and surgeries, which I know a thing or two about, mm -hmm. um, to help them adopt new lifestyles that will enable them to stay healthier longer and enable um, medications that they're on perhaps to, to work better in their bodies. Um, sort of like an occupational therapy, but with a different twist on it. Do you have to get a master's for this? Or? You sure do. Um, I'm in this for the long run. So how many years do you have left? Um, I will be done with my bachelor's in about three semesters, awesome. and then we start applying to grad schools. Right. And um, so then, uh, uh, what classes are you taking this semester? Oh goodness, um, I'm taking an upper level Latin American anthropology course, mm. and medical anthropology, and an applied behavioral science course, you know, since that's my major. and. Probably the most challenging, actually, is Spanish 216, which mm. is you know, maybe something that you could yes. help me with. We're going <laughs> to meet up later on this week. I, I have not been in a Spanish course in 17 years, so I'm just trying to... 
pick up where I left off. It's like me with Italian. Like it, Americans that speak Italian uh, can't believe I can't. They speak better Italian than me now. <laughs> it's been 16 years. But it's I think uh, I think we're about out of time. And uh, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. Well, you're wrong. I'm wrong. You're the one who misrepresented the facts. Misrepresented the facts. Are you kidding? Your proposal is ridiculous. You have no right to call anyone. You are the worst much. example of Think politics. I stand for you're something. Flip flop. I stand for something. Flip flop or flip flop. Your proposal is ludicrous. My proposal ludicrous. will go exactly the way I say Over it will. My dead body. I think somebody needs a timeout. That's the power of one. I motion that I be issued the timeout. And wow, me too. Yeah, for sure, you should get a timeout. I apologize. And I motion that we, uh, I, start showing more respect. Civility. Pass it on. Welcome back to Good Morning KU. I'm Stephanie Bickle here to give you the news and sports update. A civilian contractor and military veteran with a valid base entry pass went on a shooting rampage at U.S. Navy Command Complex building Monday, killing 12 people before being shot dead himself. 34-year-old Aaron Alexis was identified by officials as a shooter who was killed in the gun battle with police responding to the morning attack at the Washington Navy Yard. A military official said Alexis has been a Navy reservist on active duty before being discharged for misconduct. Hurricane Ingrid and Tropical Storm Manuel collided in Mexico on Monday, damaging both coasts and killing 34 people. The Mexican Interior Minister said the storm has affected 1.2 million people. The rainstorms had subsided in Colorado, allowing rescue workers to search for the accounted 1,000 plus people. The last of this rain has headed as rain is expected to last throughout the day here in Lawrence. Now on to sports. The Jayhawks still have not won a road game in four years. They fell to Rice in Houston on Saturday, 23 to 14. However, Ben Heaney recorded a career best 15 tackles and Jake Heaps passed for 157 yards. KU will face Louisiana Tech on Saturday in Lawrence at 11 a.m. for family weekend. KU Volleyball won all three matches this weekend to win the in-tower Invitational in Wisconsin. Senior Brianne Riley recorded a season-high 31 digs and was also named Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. The women return home for their next five games, beginning with this weekend's Kansas Invitational. The women's soccer team lost 1-0 at home on Sunday against San Francisco. They travel to South Dakota State on Friday and play at home against Illinois State this Sunday. Their current record is 3, 4, and 1. The Royals won their home series opener with Cleveland Indians last night, 7-1. to one. The Royals are two and a half games back in the wildcard race with the Texas Rangers coming to town on Thursday. And finally, the Chiefs won 17-16 against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. Their current record is 2-0 and oh and matches last season's win total. Alex Smith threw for 223 yards and two, two touchdowns. He also rushed for a game-high 57 yards. That's all we have for sports today, and that's all we have for Good Morning KU. I'm Stephanie Bickle, and have a good morning.